Let's go home. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, mm -hmm. they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. Verse 22. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Now the 19, look at the 19. And today something will surprise you. Let's all read. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They realized that everything, they seized them and dragged them to where? The marketplace. The marketplace. Look at the verse 22. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten with ropes. Now, I have a question. They placed them in the marketplace and they brought the magistrates. A magistrate located in the marketplace, no. magistrates are located in the court. So in the spiritual realm, a marketplace is a spiritual court. Help me to speak to someone and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. What are you doing? What are you doing? In the market. In the market. You may be seated. Life is spiritual. Paul and Silas just performed the miracle and the people are angry. And because the people are angry, they want to finish them. And I think they will place them in the temple court in different, different court locations. And the first place they have to place them is in the marketplace. Because the marketplace is where every transaction about a person's destiny happens. For a person to be sold is in the marketplace. For somebody's health to be under attack is in the marketplace. For somebody's destiny to be compromised is in the marketplace. When they place them in the marketplace, all of a sudden, magistrates showed up. A magistrate is a judge that works in the courthouse. And in a place where they work, it is their court location. So in the spiritual realm, a market location is a court. And when your case gets into the spiritual court place, anything can happen. But anybody seated here that your case in a spiritual Jesus. marketplace by Jesus. the reason of the fire and the power of God, Jesus. I divert it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say any marketplace, any marketplace, I reject it. I reject it. Never. Never. Sit down for a minute. Now, when the magistrate showed up, the first thing that happened, they were stripped. When you are stripped, you are naked. When you are naked, you are disgraced. When you are disgraced, anybody can enter into your case. Any case that will cause disgrace around you. Jesus. From any spiritual location of a marketplace. Jesus. I've told you more, the most dangerous places in life are marketplace and a junction. A junction, a tea junction or a runabout. That's where spiritual things happen. It's called a spiritual portal. It goes a long way to affect the destinies of people. And in the spiritual marketplace, monies are being exchanged behind the scenes. And when monies are being exchanged behind the scenes, the kind of currency that will be used to buy a person or to sell a person is different from the other person. Jesus was sold with 30 pieces of silver. Joseph, 20 pieces of silver. And you, how much? And to determine the kind of money they use to sell a person is connected to the year you got your biggest break, you got your biggest break in life. Joseph, at the age of 20 years, that's when his dreams have started becoming great. 20 years. So they sold him for 20. Jesus, he started performing miracles at the age of what? 30. 30 years. So they used that. And in the days of Samson, 1100 shekels of silver. And 1100 shekels of silver, if you, if you count all the digits in the 1100, well, as you count the digits in the 1100, what is it? It's two. One plus one plus zero plus zero. Is equal to what? Two. Now in the spiritual realm, anytime time they are working on any digit or a currency, one zero is added to it. So it's 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 2. So 2, 0 to 8 is what? 20. And why was Samson owned connected to the 1100 or the 20? Because Samson became a judge. He ruled the nation, a president for 20 years. That's right. So anything connected to your greatness, that's what is being used to sell a person. It affects the person's greatness. Move the person from where they are. And the Bible says, and after they were stripped, they were beaten. What is beating? Life can beat a person. When life beats you, you have no other option. 
When life beats you, where everybody enjoys, you can't enjoy. Life, when life beats you, sickness can be a portion of the person. What is causing life to beat you? But all of them begins from the spiritual marketplace. Yes, Lord. Anywhere Jesus Christ went to, it's only the marketplace where they brought the sick people. How can Mark chapter 6, verse number 56 tells you, Jesus went about doing good, doing amazing things. We are all excited. But the Bible says, any place where people were sick, they moved them and placed them in the marketplace. Transactions happen in marketplaces. He said, wherever you went, towns, villages, countryside, they placed those who were ill in the marketplaces. The marketplace location, things begin to happen in the life of people. And the same Acts chapter 16, verse number 22. And after, after, after being beaten, after they went through nakedness, look at what happened. Number 23. It says, number 23, it says, after being beaten, flogged, they were thrown in the jail. Pastor Daniel, I'm free. I'm not at, at, at in Sewom. How do I know I'm in jail? Anytime your life, number one, is controlled by other people. You are in jail. If somebody shows you what to eat, you are in jail. If somebody determines what to wear, you are in jail. If somebody tells you what time to sleep, you are in jail. And I believe some people say that I'm free by myself, but let me explain to you. If sickness dictates to you what to eat, you are in jail. Thank you, I'm trying my best. If sickness tells you this is what you have to eat, before a person gets to jail, they start from the spiritual marketplace. If sickness can cause you to change what you wear, you are in jail. If your size changes and you can't wear what you want to wear, you're... I'm not talking about dieting, it's your own. But when you are forced, extra something the person is in jail and the jail started hear me right now the jail started from the marketplace i came to ask the magistrate a question if you're a magistrate sit in the court Ah. what are you doing in the market but in the spiritual realm a market is a court transactions destinies are being exchanged And the moment you find yourself in that court place, the marketplace, the first thing that shows up in a person's life is that your shoes are being taken away. Child of God, hear me. Your shoes signifies your authority. Your shoes signifies your power. Your shoes signifies your greatness. Your shoes signifies where you are going tomorrow. Many people from Sunday School 101, I'm about to show you something right now that will surprise you. We all know about the story of the prodigal son. Do you know the prodigal son? The guy that left the father and went away to go and eat the food of pigs. Do you all remember the guy? Do you know that the moment the guy left the house, he left his shoes? I'm about to explain to you. And when the guy came back to his senses and said, let me go back to my father. The Bible says the moment the guy was on the way to the father, the Bible says when the father saw him, the father said to them, put a sandal on the feet. So he left the house when his his feet, his sandals were taken away. And for you to go back to your house, you've got to wear your shoe. So anytime, so for the guy to even make that poor decision, his shoes were missing. 15, 22, look. Look at it right now. But the father said to the servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his finger. And sandals on the feet. So anytime your feet, you begin to wear your spiritual sandals, you wear the best cloth. And your best cloth means your best identity. You slow. Listen, which means, Pastor Nee, all the time the prodigal son left the house, his shoe was missing. When your shoe is missing, you lose where you belong. Jesus. When your spiritual shoe is taken away, you lose where you're destined to be. The prodigal son, when he went back, the father said, you, do, you are not wearing a shoe. Today, in this spiritual marketplace, Jesus. where they have kept your shoe, yes, Lord. by the God of the testimony city I serve, Amen. may you get your shoe back in Amen. the name of Jesus. Say, I'm getting my shoe back. I'm getting my shoe back. Say, I'm getting my shoe back. I'm getting my shoe back. Say, the shoe is mine. The shoe is mine. Nobody can take it away. Nobody can take it away. So, for the prodigal son to get back on his feet, 
he has to wear his shoe back so that his destiny, his original identity can be located. Any time you dream and your shoe is missing, you are in the marketplace. And any time you dream and your shoe is missing, it means anything is happening because hear me, hear me right now, life is spiritual. How, 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 how can I be having a service over here? And I went at the back there. I saw a man over there. When I saw the man who was sitting over there, the man could not move. And I said to them that the man sitting there, there's somebody that is standing close to him that has struck the man with stroke. And I said, I see a name. And I told them a name. And I asked them, who is it? They said, the man started the church with the name I mentioned. The man started the church with the name I mentioned. You don't understand. The man started the church with the name I mentioned. And the person, the, the, name, the name I mentioned said, I will take it from you. Fight, fight, fight. The person struck this man with stroke. Evil has crippled him. And now it's even in the body of Christ. You've got to get to the realm where you say to yourself, I'm a child of the supernatural. Yes, enough sir. is enough. Jesus. So you can't be a believer who doesn't know spiritual mysteries. Because anything can happen. Jesus. Now let me tell you the second thing about a shoe. Somebody say a shoe. A shoe. I can feel you. A shoe. I can feel you. A shoe. For the last time. A shoe. Now when it comes to shoes, any time a person's family destiny or a family, a person's family lineage has to be cut short, they take off their shoes. If a person's shoe is being taken away, their whole family lineage can be cut off. Pastor Daniel, how do you know? I'm glad you asked me. That's why you've got to be in a church where mysteries are being shown. Now, in the Jewish culture, in the people of Israel, do you know something used to happen? When you were a man and you die, your wife becomes a widow, right? Now, in their culture, when the wife becomes a widow, the man's brother is supposed to marry the wife. Now, if the man's brother, who is alive, refuses to marry the widow, the whole family will say that this guy has done something evil. So, we are about to banish him from the family tree. And for them to banish you from the family tree, they remove your shoes. Jesus. Now wait. And after, hear me, after they remove your shoe, they call the man that this is the man or the family with no sandals. So in the spiritual realm, there are people in life, they have been tagged people with no sandals. Jesus. And when your sandals are being removed, your lineage, anytime you enjoy a kind of life and all of a sudden, that kind of life is blocked, your shoe is taken away. Money was coming, pa, it stopped, shoe taken away. Job moving, pa, shoe taken away. Father Daniel, are you, are you sure? Deuteronomy 25 verse 9. Let's go. Look at it right now. His brothers, look at it right now. His brother's widow shall go up to him in the presence of the elders. Take off one of his shoes, sandals, and spit in his face. Which means, any time they take off your shoe, anybody can spit in your face. Pastor Daniel, what's the meaning for somebody spitting in your face? When people spit in your face, it means you are disgraced. So before this grace shows up, a shoe, a sandal, is being spit in his face. And look at it right now. This is what is done to the man who will not build up his brother's family line. So if a family line should not be continued, a shoe is removed. The NLT version will give it a translation that will shock you. It says, she must declare, this is what happens to a man who refuses to provide his brother with children. And let's go to the verse number 10, NIV. And look at what it says over there. Let's go. The man's line, look at it. The man's line shall be known in Israel as the family of the unsandled. So there are many people in life, they have been tagged. The men, the women, the family of the unsandled. But today, as we walk on our spiritual shoes, Jesus. you shall not be on sandal. Yes, Nobody can speak in your face. Oh, the last to say the amen will be the yes, first. Lord. You will not be the on sandal. Yes, Sit down. Okay, Pastor Daniel, you went so far. In Ghana. Don't let us go to Nigeria. In Ghana. In Ghana. Don't let us go to America. In Ghana. When somebody is a chief, somebody is a king, and they want to remove the person from being a chief or a king. The only thing they have to do is to remove their sandals. My hear God. me? The person can have their crown. They can have their chair. 
but so, Jesus. so long as the suit is taken yes, away, crown no eye kwa. Say no eye kwa. So many people are sitting on chairs in life, Jesus. but their shoes have been taken but i came to bring you back your shoe yes, for your marriage your favor your yes, greatness sir. your elevation i came my to give it back to you yes, give me my, my, my sound give me yes, my sound sir. receive it on every side no. i came to give it back to you yes, on every side, on every side. Hey. hey sit down for a minute protocol protocol do your job i'll give you the chance i promise you for real for real I promise you for real, for real. I promise you for real. I promise you for real. Protocol, if you don't let them go, you rather go. For real. Next time I'm no longer responsible. D so, Pastor Ni, somebody can have a chair. Man of God, get me this chair. Man of God, get me this chair. Let me tell you something. Hear me? Christians, Christians don't know mysteries. It's very sad that the, the, the older generation... Before even the white man came, they knew spirituality. How did they know? Sit down. How did they know that you can sit on your chair, but if they remove your shoe, the chair is not yours again? But although tentatively, you are sitting on the chair. And everything the other people use is in our Bible and believers we don't know. We talk and shout with no power. So you are there, doing well in your business. The one day, you had a dream, and your shoe was missing. And, and, and you woke up, and went on WhatsApp. Woke up, and went on Facebook, and started joking. You didn't know that that day, you lost your business. Your destiny helper, I promise you, is going to buy a Range Rover for you. You were so excited. We were waiting for the day, and all of a sudden, your shoe was missing. And Jesus. you woke up, and the first thing you wanted to do was Banco and Tilapia. You didn't know. That was the day you lost it all. You can be a member of parliament. You can be a president. You can be an MC. If your shoe is missing, you have lost the seat. That's why when I'm doing directions for people in this house, the pastors will tell you when I'm doing serious directions about political stuff, I work on their shoes. That's why nobody in this house has ever lost a, a, a lesson before this house. Nobody. MP yes, on both sides. Yes, sir. One of our guys, one of our guys, one of our guys, he went to contest for his primaries. He won by one vote. Adam Abanya. He won by one vote. boy because of grace. How did they know that when you are sitting on a chair and somebody take off your shoe, you are gone? So, Pastor Ni, people are busy wearing crowns. People are busy wearing Antoine uh, Fensen, Kinte. People are busy wearing all the jewels. People are busy sitting on the chair, but the shoe is gone. So, the Bible says, 25, verse number 10, the Bible says that it shall be called the family of the unsandal. The message Bible will make you angry about what it says over there. The message Bible will make you angry. It says, his name in Israel shall be family, no sandal. So hear me. There are ladies here, not here, in life, that are called ladies, no sandals. Men, no sandals. Jesus. But not in Poe. Yes, Lord. To, oh, my Yambo, yes, Lord. That's why today, I ask you to bring your shoes. That whoever will take away your shoe, Jesus. your name will not be name no sandal, favor no sandal. Yes, Say hey. hey, sit down for a minute. 
Child of God, hear me? In my last five minutes, unfortunately, I came to let you know that life is spiritual. Never move in life with your eye. When was the last time you woke up in the morning, you anointed your head? When was the last time you held your mantle? People know things that believers are joking and playing and joking for our lives. I want the 21st century believer to get to a realm where they will move in the glory. They will move in the power of God. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand and say, my shoe. My shoe. And the shoe of my children. And the shoe of my children. Can never be taken away. Can never be taken away. Say, I preserve my shoe. I preserve my shoe. And the shoe of my children. And the shoe of my children. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I preserve my shoe. I preserve my shoe. And the shoe of my children. And the shoe of my children. Can never be taken away. Can never be taken I away. I preserve my shoe. I preserve my shoe. And the shoe of my family. And the shoe of my family. Can never be taken away. Can never be taken I away. I preserve my shoe. I preserve my shoe. My shoe. My shoe. Can never. Can never. Be taken away. Be taken away. Check this thing right now. One day, Jesus meets a man. The name of the man is called John the Baptist. Do you, do you know John the Baptist? Uh, 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 did you meet him before? Did you meet him before? Okay, John the Baptist. Uh, oh, you know, met him before. Oh, the guy that was baptizing people by River Jordan. Don't you, have you met him? Oh, a so by any day you can't say we name a double or son any. You don't know that John the Baptist. Um, so that John the Baptist, do you know that one day John the Baptist met Jesus Christ? And in order to talk about the greatness of Jesus, he, he talked about it metaphorically. He looked at Jesus and said to everybody, the one coming after me, his shoes are bigger than my shoes. Wow. So, he didn't even say that. He says, I'm not worthy to even, mean to me, run in Papua. Some English words going to me from Chin Kuchinim. Some way, somehow, I can't remove his shoes. Jesus. 3 verse 11, Matthew. Look at Revelation. He says, thank you. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes, that is Jesus, who is more powerful than I. So your shoe determines your powerful level. I know my level. <laughs> Look at it right now. The answer is there. Who sandals I'm not worthy to come. So the difference yes, between John the Baptist and Jesus was a sandals. He'll baptize you. Of the Holy Spirit and fire. When somebody comes after your shoe, they've come after your destiny. One day I closed service here. Somebody met me over and said, Prophet Daniel, uh, do you have a different Bible? I said, I have your own Bible. The one you read is what I read. God gives me revelation and mysteries. I, I mean, I try to know things. I said, God, open my eye and let me know. Whatever you see around us, everything is in the Bible. Everything is in the Bible. Just few of them that they've taken up, but many of them are in the Bible. But it takes revelation. Every week I read four books. Every week I read four. Every, every week, with all your counseling and trouble, four, four weeks. Four books all the time. And Papa had a dream, four books. And Papa, I'm going for interview, four books. Because where the, the next century, where the century we are in right now, where it's moving, you've got to move to a place where knowledge will have a revolution. And God is looking for people that will take over in the, in the physical marketplace so that we can take over in the spiritual marketplace. Child of God, <coughs> I came to introduce you to the next dimension of your life. And that dimension is called the dimension of the supernatural. Yes, Lord. And, Jesus. And, and in my last two minutes, I'm about to end over here. Tell the person around you, can he land? Can he land? What is the answer? Well, I can land over here. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> um, um, <coughs> okay, water, 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 amen. Supernatural, I think this is supernatural, amen. It's not easy to fast close to one year, and I'll end my fast on the 30th of September, by the grace of God. Somebody asked me, Pastor Daniel, with all these testimonies, why are you still fasting? I'm not fasting because of that. I want to fast to get to a realm where God, everybody who enters into our campus, from the dancing to our dancings, all the properties over here, people shall experience the grace of yes, God. Lord. Now, um, I end on this note. I end on this note. Joseph was sold in the slave market. 37 verse 28, Genesis. 
I'll, I'll end on this note, and it will surprise you what happened in the life of Joseph. 37 verse 28. And they put him out and sold him for 20 seconds of silver. That's the time his greatness started. And you know that when they sold Joseph, I'm about to tell you something that will surprise you. Verse number 24. Everybody check the revelation very well. The Bible says, now come, you represent Joseph. And I want other people to help. Protocols, help me. Yeah, come right now. Um, can you move this back for me right now? I promise you I'll be done in two minutes time. Come right now. Um, this is Joseph. Say Joseph. Joseph. Say Joseph. Joseph. And um, these are the brothers. Who are these people? The brothers. Who are these people? The brothers. Who is this one? Joseph. Who is this one? Brothers. Great. Hear me right now. The Bible says, KGV says, and they put him in a pit. Everybody, listen to me. If you can ever forget any revelation in this church, never forget this one. Now the person taking the picture, sit down right now because a revelation is about to even hit your life now. Now everybody sit down and be sensitive. Everybody sit down and be very, very sensitive. And look at it right now. And they took him. Who took him? Who took him? Brothers. And they put him in a pit. Now, now, now. And now everybody, um, um, um. Something will cause you to be angry right now. The Bible says, when they put him in a pit, look at the next verse, what they did. The Bible says, let's all read from the next verse. Let's all go. And they sat down to eat bread. Wait. So some people want you to be in a pit so that they can eat. Jesus, my God. It means some people are not happy so long as you are not in a pit. But the moment you can be in a pit, Jesus. then they can sit down to eat. Right so the God. moment Joseph entered into the pit, look at it right now. Open it, start eating. Start eating. Start eating. Start eating. Start eating. Listen, how on earth will you get the confidence My God. to eat whilst your brother Jesus, Jesus, And nobody Jesus. eating because of your downfall. My God. And nobody eating because of your downfall. Jesus. I came to starve them yes, by fire. Yeah. They will forever starve. They will forever starve. And nobody eating My God. because of your downfall. Jesus. They will forever starve. Yes, Lord. Say, hey. you will not eat on my head. 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 Say, hey. Hey. You cannot eat on my head. You cannot eat on my head. Say anybody, anybody who wants to eat on my head. Who wants to eat on my I head? I crush you by fire. I crush you by fire. It means, hear me. It means somebody wants you to be in a pit so that they can drive your car. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody wants you to be in a pit Jesus. so that they can live in the house you have built. Jesus. But I speak by grace. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Hear me. I suggestically, this is the meaning. It simply means, Pastor Nee. Whilst he was not in the pit, they were hungry. That's right. When he was not in the pit, they were hungry. And they didn't mind being hungry. But they were waiting to eat whilst he's dead. And let me shock you. The bread they were eating. The bread they were eating. Jesus. Do you know who brought them the food? Right. Slow, it's slow. Jesus. My God. Do you know who brought them the food? So I brought you food. You have put me down. And you are now eating. My God. Anybody you are helping. Jesus. That wants to bite your fingers. Yes, sir. Jesus. May God is great than my fire. Jesus. I brought you food. Yes, sir. And now yes, sir. you have placed me down. Just to eat Jesus. my food I brought to you. Jesus. If I didn't have Jesus. good intentions for you in the first place, I would have come here to bring you food. The same people you helped, the same people you supported. Jesus. They are the same one that want to see you in a pit. My God. But because your shoes are preserved, yes, Lord. the agenda will never succeed. Amen. It will never happen. Yes, Lord. Say, hey. I leave that pit. I leave that pit. 